Hi everyone, I'm Kerry Chandler. I'm going to be uh, running you through Canvas, some basics, as well as a few of the more slightly advanced topics that uh, CHS wants you to know about this year. Um, I'm going to, uh, of course, go over this with you in person, but I'm also recording this video um, to, so because there's a lot of the examples I can't do more than once. And also, in case you have questions later, you can go back and review the video. This video will be posted to the Conroe High School Canvas. So um, first of all, if you are a new teacher and you are not um, enrolled in the Conroe High School Canvas course, uh, you should have gotten an email from Kim Stokes inviting you to do that. Uh, and if you haven't, you need to email Kim Stokes and let her know that you haven't been invited to that to that course because that's where all pertinent information is going to be for you. Now, for everyone else, or for everyone, uh, aside from the Conroe High School Canvas page, you should have a Canvas page for each of your different preps. So if you are like me and lucky enough to have one prep, um, I don't just teach one section of it. All of my sections have been condensed into this one little thing here, just like the last two years of Canvas. So nothing new there. If you're seeing a course from last year instead of your new course, the way you go to see uh, the new course and what courses you want to be able to see is once you've logged in, you click this little button right here that says courses. And it will show the course uh, courses that you have starred. And by that, when I click all courses, you'll see um, that we have the uh, you have a bunch of courses, past enrollments, all that stuff, and you just choose which ones you want displayed on your dashboard, Conroe High School, and whatever else, and you put click the little star, and then when you go to your dashboard, <clears throat> which is your landing page when you log in normally, you'll now see those things. So uh, we're going to look at, I have not set up my class yet, so I'm going to do that right here in front of you. Um, so there's a lot of stuff you can do. I'm lucky enough that I have did this last year. So um, if you are in the situation where <clears throat> you uh, taught the course last year and you're going to mostly use the course as is, or even if you're going to change a lot of stuff, this is still probably your best first step. Once you've clicked on that course, you are going to click settings over here on the bottom left. You're then going to go right over here, and on the right, you have some different things here. And what you want to do is click Import Course Content, not Export, Import. Import Course Content. For our content type, we are going to select Copy a Canvas Course. All right, now we're going to search for a course. So if we have a team member who has already added us to their class, and we want to copy their course, we can just find that course. It'll be listed here. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. But if we're copying our course from last year, which is what I'm doing, I'm going to find that course. In this case, it is 1718 semester one. So, uh, and that's the class right there. So I click it. All right. Now, at this point, I can select specific content or I can copy over all content. If you could do all content, you're done. But I'm going to show you select specific content and show you what that looks like. So I, I'm going to choose select specific content. <clears throat> I can click adjust events and due dates and it'll move those things for me. But then I've got to say, okay, well, the beginning date last year was the 9th. The beginning date this year is, uh, I don't even remember, what is it? The 15th? Okay, so I'm going to say 8-15- 18 and that's, I shouldn't have to put in any of that stuff or I can click this and just choose it either way done and I'm going to choose import all right so at this point it says waiting for selection select content I'm going to select my content here so um, I'm going to keep the same course settings from last year um, that Mostly what that affects is if you can see over here, I've got some stuff gray, some stuff black. Um, this is, if it's black, it means the students can see it. If it's gray, it means they can't. Um, and right now, it's at the default of what Canvas decides students should be able to see. 
Um, but, you know, I changed that, and so I'm going to click Course Settings and change that. Um, I'm going to uh, also choose Syllabus Body. Uh, and then I'm going to look at my modules. So I don't know if I'm going to use all the six modules, so I'm going to click the little arrow. All right, and I'm going to keep these all these modules, and we'll click my little check bot, and that's it. So there I go. So I've picked my content. Now I, I select, select Content, and it says Queued. Uh, so um, now it says Running, and it's going to go ahead and copy the content for me. All right, and it's done. So uh, now if I click Home, I'm going to see what my class looked like last year, um, the last time I edited it. So there we go. Um, I've got my course as I built it last year. There's still things I might want to change. Uh, right now, it is unpublished, but if I feel good about it, then I'll go ahead and click Publish. So uh, the next thing I'm going to show you, this year, Conroe High School, and I believe the other high schools, are moving to put our uh, lesson plans in Canvas. Now, I know a lot of us have just gotten used to using Forethought, or hopefully we've been using it for a while. Um, that does not mean that you have to stop using Forethought. If you like using Forethought, it's fine. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you first how to add your lesson plans to Canvas, um, and then I'm going to show you how to use your lesson plans from Forethought in Canvas. So, first of all, um, your department chair should go over with you at your department meetings, or maybe already has, uh, how your department is going to handle lesson planning this year. So do whatever they say. But in terms of how to get into Canvas, uh, it's just going to be uploading a file. So to do that, what we do is we go over here to Files. We should, in our course, create a folder, and we'll call it Lesson Plans. All right, now, this folder called Lesson Plans, right now, students can see that. And if you are fine with students seeing your lesson plans, good for you. But if you're not, what we do is we go over here to these three little dots, and we choose, oh, no, nope, not the dots, I'm sorry, the little check mark. We choose a little check mark where it says Published, and we change it. We don't unpublish it. We change it to Restricted Access. And we are going to uh, set that as Hidden, Files inside will be available with links. So, okay, update. Good. Now I've got my little folder. I'll click my folder. To upload a file, you click upload, believe it or not. Whatever file you're going to put here, you just upload there. Easy. All right, Word file, whatever. If you still want to use Forethought, though, what you can do, go to Forethought, find the lesson plan you want to do. I'm going to click this week. This is my week one. I'm going to go to View Weeks Plans. And then I'm going to choose to print this. So I click Print Plans, print the week's plans to PDF. I made a little report here. I'm going to open up this report just so you can see what it looks like. And there's my week's plans as a PDF. Easy file. All right. So, um, of course, you'll want to rename that to Week 1 Lesson Plans or whatever you want to do. But now what I'm going to do is over here, I'm going to upload that file. Yes, there it is. All right. And there we go. And now, whoever has access to my class as a teacher will be able to see this. And this brings us to our next topic of discussion. Your AP, who is your appraiser, as well as your department chair, needs to have access to your class. Uh, in Canvas, and uh, uh, also, if uh, you are if you are doing lesson plans as a team, you have two options. You can do the lesson plans. If you're the person whose job it is to do lesson plans this month, you can make your lesson plans and then email the file to your team. That honestly is probably the easiest thing. And then each person on the team is responsible for uploading their plans. But your team may decide no, one person is going to upload it. Whatever. Uh, in that case, you'll have to give the other teachers on your team access to your course. But that actually might be a good idea anyway, because maybe one person on your on your team is the Canvas person, whose job it is is to update the Canvas course for all of your team. Uh, whatever you decide to do, I'm going to show you how to add people to your course now. So I'm going to click 
US History DCA to get back to my course homepage, though I didn't actually have to do that. Uh, and over here on the left, I'm going to choose People. So what People does is it shows you who uh, it shows you who is enrolled in your course. By default, all of your students, as well as all of the parents who have signed up for parent access, have access in your class, as well as you. And you can see then the uh, you can see then the name, their login ID. You can see uh, which will be their uh, first class username if it's a student and it'll be their personal email if it's a parent. Um, you can, this sys ID thing, don't worry about that. Uh, and then you can see uh, their role. You can also see what section they're in, uh, only the students. So uh, this girl here is in my fifth period class. She's a student and above her I see her parents are observing her. So that's what that is. We're going to add a teacher to our class. So I'm gonna click plus people to add a person. I'm going to add the user by email address. And so I'm going to put who I, uh, well, I actually don't even know who my appraiser is, but I believe it's uh, Mr. Glassby. So I'm gonna say jglassby at conroeisd.net. All right, I'm gonna add them. His role is going to be, now I have a few, I, I have a few things I can do here. I'm gonna add him as a teacher. If he's a teacher, he can edit my class. Um, you don't, but he doesn't need to edit my class. Uh, so I'm gonna choose teacher copy only. What this means is he's a teacher who can see everything a teacher can see, including those restricted access folders, but all he can do is copy them to his own course. He can't um, edit them in any way. And that's probably best um, for, especially if you're adding other teachers. So I'm gonna choose teacher copy only. Now section. I could add him to multiple sections, but there's actually no reason for that. So unless he asks me to do that, I'm going to leave him in section one because as long as I don't check this little box here, he'll be able to interact with everybody in the class. So not even I don't even know if he needs to interact with anybody in the class but me, but there we go. So now I've done this, I click next. And so he has now been sent an invitation to be a teacher with the copy only ability to my class. And then whenever he logs into Canvas, he'll get a big notification up here at the top of Canvas saying you have been added to such and such class, accept or decline. And when he clicks accept, he will now be shown as one of those. So I click add users and that actually sent the request. So now if I go down, I'm going to find so there I am, teacher. Here's all the sections I'm in. I'm in all the sections, obviously. And I'm going to scroll on down and there is James Glassby, teacher, copy only. And it says pending, meaning that he has not yet accepted the invitation to the course. And I already added my department chair earlier. So I'm gonna scroll down and show you what it looks like once they've accepted. So there's my department chair, Shatari, department chair, Shatari Miller. And she, it does not say pending because she has already accepted the request. And so there we are. And that is it. You, uh, you need to add your department chair. You need to add your appraiser. You don't need to add anyone else, but if you would like to add the members of your team so that they can copy things from your course, which I highly recommend, then you add them the same exact way. So now if, Shatari Miller or James Glassby, once he accepts the request, clicks on, uh, comes to my class. Well, first of all, when he goes to his dashboard now, he will have his classes, plus he'll now have my class. And so then if he goes to my class and he clicks files, he will see a folder right there called lesson plans. And when he opens that folder, he will see my first week's lessons. And I can actually, I'm gonna change the name right here to week one lesson, or just week one. There we go. So there's a lot of other stuff you can do with Canvas. Um, I'm going to not show you all that right now. That is something for future trainings, but uh, just to give you a quick idea of the things you can do, 
Uh, you can create quizzes, which I don't have any quizzes for this particular class, but you can create quizzes that self-grade themselves. You can um, add files, of course, of all sorts of different things, as you see. Um, you can, uh, modules is where I like to put my class structure there, so you can see everything. My students have access to my PowerPoints, they have access to their assignments, they have their test is just that's not an actual test, it's just timing the tests that day, and so on. Everything they need for the whole year is right there. Um, and, of course, let's see if it, I think it might have actually published the course. Yes, and now it's published. So there you go. Um, that's it. If you have any questions, email me. My email address is kwchandler at conrise.net. Thank you.